Hey there, Westerosi. Welcome back to Mike Meeple's Painting Poorly Miniature Painting Tutorials for A Song of Ice and Fire the Miniatures Game by Come On Games. Today we're taking a look at how to paint a unique infantry unit from the Baratheon faction. The Rylor. The Rolor. The Rylor Faithful. These servants of the Lord of Light come in five different poses and are some of the more complicated miniatures that come in the game to paint, so make sure that you pack your patience for this trip. In addition to painting the faithful, we're also going to be painting a subtle glow effect to simulate the light from their flaming swords, known as object source lighting. I'll be Xenophil priming the models, but with a little twist. Undercoat with black, and apply a gray spray from a 45 degree angle above the model like normal. But, when you get to where you'd spray the model from directly above with white, instead, spray the model from the direction of the sword. This will help give us an idea of where to apply the glow effect later on, and maximize the brightness of those sections of the model. Remember, always thin your paints with equal parts water, unless I tell you otherwise. We're going to start off by using Japanese Uniform by Vallejo to paint the doublets of the models. Normally, I'd suggest applying a second coat of this color, but since we're trying to maximize the contrast between the light and the dark portions of the model, I'm going to just keep it with one coat. Next, take some Dark Vermilion by Vallejo and paint the red portions of the model. This includes the model's hoods, the leather straps hanging below the doublets, and their weird elf shoes. After that, we'll use German Grey by Vallejo to paint the model's sleeves and pants. I also use this color to give the faithful some gloves. Next, take some plate mail metal by the army painter and paint the armor and weapons. These models have pauldrons on their shoulders, armor on their forearms, elbows, knees, and greaves on the shins. Most of them also have a ring of chain mail right beneath their red hoods. After that, we'll use some basic skin tone from Vallejo to paint the faces. Again, normally I'd suggest using multiple coats, but by using only one, it helps provide that contrast with the portions of the model that will be lit up from the flames of the sword. Next, take some chocolate brown from Vallejo and paint the belts, scabbards, and handles of the swords, along with the two or three straps across the model's chests. You'll also want to paint the flagpole this color as well. Once that's done, we're going to start working on the flag itself. Take some demonic yellow by the army painter and paint the field of the flag. For this, I will say to use two coats of paint to get a nice even yellow. Just make sure that the first coat of yellow is completely dry before you apply a second. After that, take some orange brown by Vallejo and paint the flame surrounding the heart on the flag. When that's dry, we'll take our dark vermilion again and paint the heart itself on the flag, the trim at the top and the bottom of the flag, 
and the heart ornament on top of the flagpole. The last thing we'll paint on the flag will be the ornamental metallic portions around the heart at the top of the pole, and we'll be using some Vallejo's gold, but without thinning it with water. Now take some plate mail metal and finish off the metallic details like the belt buckle and the metal portion of the scabbard. You can also take the time to paint the metal studs in the scabbard, but don't paint the studs in the doublet yet. We're going to do that later. The last thing we'll be base coating will be the hair. I'm just using colors that I already have available in the paint scheme, like white, brown, and orange. Once they're all dry, it's time for shades. We'll start by shading the flag with light tone by the Army Painter. Just apply a thin coat of light tone to the yellow field of the flag. While that's drying, we'll take some flesh wash by the Army Painter and shade the Faithful's faces. After that, take some Nuln Oil by Citadel and shade the rest of the model. Apply this to the clothing, the weapons, the armor. You'll also apply Nuln Oil to the flagpole and the ornament at the top. The last shade we'll be using will be Red Tone by the Army Painter, and we'll be shading the heart, flames, and red trim of the flag. When that's all dry, it's time for highlights and finishing touches. The first thing we'll be highlighting will be the face, using basic skin tone. Paint the forehead, cheeks, and down the nose of the models, along with the chin when applicable. After that, take your Japanese uniform and highlight the doublet. Normally, I'd tell you to paint all the folds in the armor and highlight all the sections where the sun would hit the doublet, and that's all still true. But we're also going to take care to highlight the areas closest to the flaming sword, using that as an additional light source in addition to the sun. Next, we'll add a secondary highlight by mixing together Japanese Uniform and Dark Sand by Vallejo. We're going to paint a smaller center portion of your previous highlight, but only from the angle of the sword light.
Once that's dry, add a touch of white to your Japanese uniform and dark sand mix, and add a third highlight. We're doing this because the most important thing to remember about painting object source lighting is that the glow is still light, and it does what light does, which is to make things brighter than places that aren't hit with the glow. So we need to create a strong highlight in that direction so that when we apply the color of the glow, it looks like it's from light and not just us slapping some orange paint on the side of our model. Use this color sparingly though, and only on areas that are closest to the sword and receiving the most light. Next, we'll take some dark vermilion and highlight the red portions. Paint all the folds in the hood, the straps, and the shoes, and just anywhere that would catch the light, remembering that the swords will be functioning as light sources as well. When working on the flag bearer, you can also take this time to highlight the heart and the red trim by painting where the flag billows outward on either side. Next, take some amaranth red by Vallejo and add a second highlight, but only from the angle of the sword such as the side of the shoes or the back of the hood. Add a little white to your amaranth red and apply a very sparse third highlight to those same areas closest to the sword. After that, we'll be adding a metallic highlight using Silver by Vallejo. Apply the silver to all the portions of the metal and the armor that would be catching the light of the sword. So the sides of the shin armor, the downward ridges of the forearm and shoulder armor, and sometimes even the chainmail and the back of the shoulder armor.
Now we'll take some neutral gray by Vallejo and apply some highlight to the black portions, but only the areas that would catch light from the sword. This could be the side of the legs, the arm and hand carrying the sword, or even the hand carrying the dagger. If you're ever unsure, simply look at the model from the angle of the sword, and if you can see it, add the highlight. After that, take some sky gray by Vallejo and add a secondary highlight to the gray, but again, sparingly. For one of the models, you'll also want to use some light flesh by Vallejo to apply a secondary highlight to the side of the face closest to the sword. Now take some flat earth by Vallejo and apply a highlight to the belts coming from the direction of the sword, along with an edge highlight along the tops of each strap on the scabbard. Next, take some cork brown by Vallejo and apply a secondary highlight to the belts. At this point, you should start to be able to see the illusion of the glow taking shape. Now we'll start highlighting the flag by using our demonic yellow to paint all the portions of the flag that billow outward on either side. Then we'll mix in some white with our demonic yellow and add a secondary highlight to everything that we just highlighted. After that, add a little bit more white and apply a third highlight to those portions on the side facing the sword. Then, take some bright orange by Vallejo and dab a few dots along the fire surrounding the heart on the flag. Just pick out a few here and there using your best judgment. Now you can highlight the hair and beards using the same color you painted them with and add some eyebrows to your figures. Before we start on those flames and the glow, take your plate mail metal and paint all the studs in the doublet. Just a little dot for each one will do the trick. We're going to start off with the flames, and we're going to start by painting them white. Once that's dry, we'll be using fluorescent yellow, orange, and magenta. Start off with fluorescent yellow and paint the flames, leaving a tiny bit of white closest to the sword. 
When that's dry, mix some fluorescent orange and magenta together and add that to the flames, leaving some yellow and white exposed. Lastly, we'll take some magenta and paint the tips of each flame. The colors of these fluorescent paints are actually so bright they don't even show up properly on my camera, so you're going to have to trust me a little. For the glow, we'll be using one part fluorescent orange and two parts water. We'll be applying this to anywhere the sword is casting light, looking at the model from the point of view of the sword as a guide. And don't forget to apply this to the sword itself, especially the hilt. By using such a thin down paint, we can apply multiple coats, building up areas closest to the sword as the most vibrant orange. To add texture to the base, we'll be using Vallejo's Dark Earth Paste. and dry brushing some flat earth along the ground once it's dry before applying a light dry brush with some dark sand. With the dark sand, you'll want to dry brush a little bit stronger closer to the flaming sword because we'll be using that same two to one water and fluorescent orange mix to add some glow to the ground near the sword. Now paint the rim of the base and spray the whole thing with your matte spray before we add static grass and rocks like I showed you in my Mountains Men and Unsullied Sword Masters tutorials. If you want specifics, make sure you check out those two videos. Just make sure you avoid placing anything in the area that's picking up the glow of the sword unless you feel like painting some of those teeny tiny rocks with fluorescent orange too. And you're finally done! Thanks for sticking through this one with me. I know it was a long one, but hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. I want to give a big shout out to all of my patrons whose generous support helped me make quality content like this. And if you're interested in becoming a patron yourself, information on how to do so can be found in the description for this video, along with links to all the supplies I used today, and a link to my blog where you'll find more tutorials for games like A Song of Ice and Fire, the miniatures game. And if you like this video and would like to see more, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, Westerosi, 